All right, this is going to be part nine. And our series on faith, our base scripture, of course, is Hebrews 11 and 1. We've said that there is always a reason for faith, that faith is not an in case of emergency break glass concept. It is to be a constancy in our lives because it is how we are called to live. The just shall live by faith. We've said that uh, faith does not require us to go against logic and reason. It does require us to go against fear, doubt, and unbelief. So in the last two parts, we took a look at the word substance, and then we looked at creation because we said that there is something that God did in the creation process that mirrors the process of our faith being built in him. We've said that uh, substance is that which is real, that which can be verified and is provable at a legal standard. Remember, uh, the definition that the writer gives us for faith, it is a legal textbook definition. The writer legally defines faith. Now, the word for substance, it means to undergird, to support, or to come up under. So we understand that our faith rests on something and on someone. It is not faith in faith. It is faith in him. And I want you to notice, when you look at the definition, the writer immediately and directly connects the word substance with the word evidence. So then whatever evidence is, it has substance to it. It is real and it is verifiable as evidence and it meets the legal standard to be considered as evidence. Now, here's what I know. You cannot walk into a courtroom and tell the judge that you have evidence and when the judge asks for it, you turn around and tell the judge he can't see it. He just has to take your word for it. He just has to have faith in faith. Now, personally, I love good mysteries. Whether it is an old time radio, which I love listening to, by the way, whether it's novels or movies, I love the challenge of following the evidence. Now, more often than not, I'm pretty good at that. I'm pretty correct at guessing who done it. Now, one of my all-time favorite shows is Columbo. Love me some Columbo. That stars P the late Peter Falk. The Epimonious character is a homicide detective. However, this show is set in what they call the inverted detective story format. In other words, the show begins with the commission of the crime. We are shown the perpetrator, their methodology, and sometimes even their motives behind the offense. The tension of the show centers on the detective discovering the evidence. There is no whodunit element. In other words, for the viewing audience, there is no real mystery to solve. We are given the origin or genesis of how it all started in the beginning. Side note, whenever Columbo turned around and said, oh, one more thing, oh boy, be that as it may. Now, when it comes to the origin of the universe and of man, and of man's purpose, there is really no mystery. We are given the who done it in the first chapter of the Bible. And all throughout history, the evidence is corroborated. While Columbo is a fictional character, there are true to life men and women who have examined the evidence. So first of all, there is the evidence in human history. Among the world's religions, the Bible stands out as singularly unique. It does so in several ways. One what such way is its formatting. The Bible is a book of history, a book of prophecies, and a book that claims supernatural origins. Now, if any of its recorded facts are inaccurate, it immediately discredits itself as being the word of God. The credibility of the scriptures is reliant upon evidence supporting these claims. If the historical facts are wrong, then it cannot be a book of supernatural origins. In other words, you can't spiritualize the inaccuracies away. I want you to notice that prophecy, in a sense, is the recording of history before it happens. If the prophecies are proven to be false, 
then again, it cannot be a book of supernatural origins. Listen to what Dr. John Warwick Montgomery points out. He says, the historic Christian claim differs qualitatively from the claims of all other world religions at the epistemological point on the, on the issue of testability. In other words, only Christianity stakes its claim to truthfulness on historical events open to critical investigation. And only this explains the number of conversions by skeptics throughout history. In other words, there have been countless men who have set out to prove that the Bible was false, but because they were looking for the truth and where it led them, they became convinced of the reliability of the scriptures, of its claims. They found them to be true and trustworthy despite the agenda that they went in with. So again, last time we talked about the book of Luke and we showed how men have followed the evidence to determine if these things be true concerning the trustworthiness of the evidence supported by many infallible proofs. That's Acts chapter one, verse three. Now there's a Greek term. I'm not gonna try to pronounce it. It's not important that we know how to pronounce it. It is important that we know what it means. It is an expression which is defined in the lexicon as decisive proof. And it indicates the strongest type of legal evidence. So now, what does the word evidence mean? In the original language, it means proof and reproof. Listen, not either or, but both and. On one hand, it's proof, and on the other hand, it is reproof. Proof meaning to validate as being correct. Remember, I substitute the word evidence for validate. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I've said that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the validation of our faith being those things that have already been accomplished and even now are still being accomplished. And these things are not casually observed. He's not saying you can't see what's been done. He's saying there's a way to see it. Now, reproof meaning to, to be correct it but it does it in a shaming way. It carries the connotation of to shame. Reproof meaning to be corrected, but in a shaming way. So again, it is both proof and reproof at the same time. So now, what does that look like? It looks like the Mari Povich show, You Are Not the Father. You got one person saying it is, you got one person saying it ain't. The DNA is evidence. On one hand, it is proof, and on the other hand, it is reproof. Someone is about to be validated as being correct. Someone else is about to be corrected, but in a shaming way, because somebody is about to be running to the back. So now, what is the evidence that God wants to present to the world? It is threefold. It is his work in creation. It is his work in human history. And it is his work in the lives of his people. Now, we got one more part. We're going to be doing part 10, I believe. I didn't lost track of the parts, but we're going to look at the word things. Why? Because that word things, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is the single most important word in that entire definition. Now, I've spent almost 90 minutes laying foundation and providing context just so we can talk about that one word.